Hello everyone and welcome back! In this lesson we are going to talk about the offline capabilities of Angular Fire and the Firebase SDK in general. So we have here our complete application with several screens already implemented including here the edit course dialog that allows us to modify data on our database. Let's see what would happen in the current version of the application if we would take the application offline. To simulate the offline scenario let's switch here to a larger window and let's open the Chrome Dev tool we're going to select here the network tab and we're going to click here on the offline checkbox. Let's now see what happens if we for example click here on the view course button. So we have opened here the course page but as we can see the page is broken and we get here a failed network request. So if we go back here to the courses page we're going to see that no courses are getting displayed as expected. We have here several failed network requests. The application cannot function normally. Especially in mobile scenarios it would be great if we could still get some sort of functionality working in our application for example the courses that we have already loaded before maybe they could still be displayed to the user and we could even take that one step further imagine that we would still allow modification operations to occur on the client and whenever the network is back up and running those modification operations would then be synchronized with the real-time database so all of these features are already available today with the Firebase SDK and Angular Fire let's turn this on and see this in action. For that we are going to switch back here to our code project and we are going to select our main application module. Here on the bottom of our application module we are going to see here where we have initialized here Angular Fire. So we have here the initialization of the Angular Fire module where we pass in here the configuration needed to access this particular instance of the database and we also have here the individual Angular Fire modules that we are going to need for this course. Notice that we are applying here here the Angular Firestore module but we are configuring it with its default settings. If now we would like to enable offline persistence capabilities we now need to choose here the enable persistence static method. So by simply calling this method we have activated all the offline features of Angular Fire and the Firebase SDK. Let's now see these offline features in action. Let's switch again here to a larger window. We are going to clear here the network log and we are going to take the application offline. Now a very important note if you are trying this out make sure that you close all the tabs of the application except the tab where you are performing the experiment. Right now at the time of recording of this course the offline features are only available for the first tab where the application is opened. In future releases of the Firebase SDK this will be supported in multiple tabs so maybe when you are watching this course this problem has already been solved. This means that when this video was recorded the offline support of Firebase and the Firebase SDK is still in an experimental phase. In any case this is what the offline features look like. We are going to click again here on the about page just like we did before and we are going to navigate now back to the courses page. So as we can see we still get here a list of courses even though the application is offline and this is because the data for these courses has been cached on the client side by the Firebase SDK. So any data that has already been loaded before is still available here as long as we still have space on the Firebase cache. Now notice what happens if we click here on the view course button. We are going to see that the data for the course containing the title and the link to the thumbnail is still available and also we get here a failed network request. So this is because as we were surfing through the application when we were online we did not load this data here containing the lessons for this particular course. So that data is not present on the cache and so the Firebase SDK will try to make a network request in order to obtain the missing data. In order to understand better how this offline support works let's take the application online again and we are going to again reload this particular page which will trigger the loading of the courses lessons. Now let's hit here the courses page and load the complete list of courses. If we now again take the application offline and we click here on the view course button this time around we do get here the list of lessons displayed here on the lessons table. 
If however we go back here to the courses page and we click here on another course that we did not open when we were online, such as for example the second course on the list, this time around we are going to get here an empty lessons table. And this is because the lessons of this course were not present on the cache. Let's now see how this works for data modification operations. We are going to edit here the first course in the list. We are going to change here the title of the course and let's call it simply the Firebase course. We are going to click save and notice that we did get here an error but the data was immediately reflected here on the list of courses. The new title was displayed here because whenever we closed the edit courses dialog our list of courses got refreshed and we got the new value for the course document from the cache. Now let's see what happens whenever we take the application back online. Once the application is back online Line, we are going to see here a few network requests saving the data that we have edited while the application was offline back to the Firestore database. If we now check the content of the database we are going to see that the new title has been saved here in our course document. So this means that if we go back here to the application and we refresh it we are going to see that we get here the new title as expected. So this is how the offline support works. Any data that is already present on the cache while we are offline is still going to get displayed to the user and data modification operations are going to be updated in the cache and they are going to be synchronized with the database later whenever our device gets back online. And with this we have a good overview of how the offline capabilities of the Firebase SDK are supposed to work. And with this we are getting close to the end of the Firestore data modification section. We are now going to talk about batched writes and we are going to talk about transactions before moving on to the new authentication section.